but we're here now and we're going to have some fun. Okay. So, uh, in just to give it some time for some other people to join, because I know there was quite a few people interested in this class today. I'm just going to go ahead and introduce myself. So hi, I am Chef Duane, and thank you so much for joining us. Uh, this is a Moroccan tagine class, okay? And welcome to my Long Island kitchen. Uh, I am in Long Island, New York currently, and um, I am doing this class in conjunction with Koki Social. So Koki Social is in 15 different cities around the country right now. Uh, if you go to the website, kokisocial.com, which you use to sign up for this class, of course, uh, there are a ton of chefs and a ton of content out there, I'm sure, in the city near you, where you can continue your journey after this is over, okay? Uh, Koki Social offers interactive, fun, uh, social uh, cooking, baking, wine tasting, and cocktail classes. So. It's uh, something that everybody can get a hold of. It's easy. We make sure that it's approachable from beginner all the way to expert. So, you know, we just want to make sure that everybody's having fun. And during this quarantine time, especially, we wanted to introduce an opportunity for you to still join us using ingredients and things that you have in your own kitchen. Okay, so uh, currently I teach pizza classes, Neapolitan pizza classes. I am, will soon be teaching a bulgogi and uh, kimchi class, and I'm also going to be teaching a tonkotsu ramen class, as well as regional barbecue cuisine out here in Long Island. So if you guys are interested after this is over and continuing your journey with me specifically, um, those are the classes I'll be teaching, as well as this coming Saturday, I'll be teaching a scratch chicken noodle soup class as well. Okay? So, uh, again, there's a ton of chefs out there and that are available right now and would love to meet you uh, once this is all over, especially. Uh, but until then, we're online and we can meet you face-to-face -face and still do our thing. All right? So... Um, let's get into it. It is um, a special thing for me, Moroccan tagine. Uh, the reason why it's called a tagine is because it is made of a dish that is called a tagine. So these are different types of tagines, and they are cast iron, they're stainless steel, they're ceramic, terracotta, glazed clay, and they use the principle of steam to cook the food. So though that is put into a fire and there is heat that is underneath it, because of the dome lid that you guys saw up here, uh, what happens is this: all this steam comes from here, goes up here, gets trapped as condensation, comes right back down, and continues to cook the food. So that's why it's actually called a tagine. Uh, so tagine actually can be utilized for many different forms. Uh, I'm just going to turn on my stove here real quick. Preheat the pan. You guys should do the same. Uh, right now I have it on high heat, uh, but you can turn yours to medium if you'd like as well if you feel more comfortable. Gregory! Um, however, um, the tagines cost about $55 to $100 on Amazon if you guys are interested in getting them from there. Uh, so, you know, it is an amazing dish. It is the precursor to a lot of other dishes, such as your paellas, uh, your jambalayas, things like that. This is like... No, I don't. Where it came from. It's okay. a you are muted. Press all day. Okay. Hold on one second. Let me make sure everybody is muted. Uh, no, one second. That's him. That's not you true. all. There we go. All right. So I'm back. All right. So, um, again, Moroccan tagine class. So we're going to get started now. As you can see, I already have my ingredients prepared. However, I did set aside some extra prep to do with you on camera so I can give you a couple tips and tricks. And as well as I know, some people may not have prepped everything. So just give me two or three minutes and I'll explain a couple prep techniques that we can use and uh, we'll go from there, okay? So uh, one thing I wanna point out is especially with this being a quarantine, um, in a lot of places, especially, there are ways that we can utilize our ingredients that will allow us to, um, what's the best way I can put it, cross-utilize. So we can use them for multiple things, okay? So for instance, uh, this carrot. Uh, the carrot is called for, in the recipe, but what happens typically is people will peel this carrot and then they'll discard all the peels, they'll discard the top, and in the end, that can be used for something else like a stock or um, you can puree, you can use it as juices as well. A lot of your nutrients are in here and we're just throwing them away. So just another way to save money during this quarantine. Um, the other thing is um, the onion. I wanted to show you guys how to cut up this onion so that way you guys can have a better idea of how to cut onions. That won't make you cry. A lot of people have asked me that. So I figured I'd just give you a quick demo, okay? So you wanna cut off the tip 
And if you're doing the julienne, you can cut off the other tip. But we're not. We're going to do a dice as in your recipe. So we're going to cut that in half, set it aside. Remember, we're saving all of this for stock. We're going to peel it. And all of this peel, we're also going to save for stock as well. Okay. I apologize if you hear my uh, kids in the background. I'm home just like everybody else working from home. And I have two twins that are, well, twins are two. Uh, but I have twins that are just aching to eat this food when we're done. So um, you want to cut across the base of it. As you see, this is a dome. So you want to do two cuts. And this is giving us our one-inch dice. And then, as you can see, there's a lot of lines that are coming out of this onion. These are, this is the grain of the onion. You want to cut along the grain. And what that will do, it will not allow the spores to release, which are what makes you cry most of the time. So you just cut along those spores, cut along the grain. And then when you cut down, you shouldn't be getting any tears. So everybody always asks that question. So I figured I'd just give a quick demo so you guys would have an idea of what to do with that. Okay? And again, we're going to save this for our stock, okay? And you can just put that in a Ziploc bag, put it in the freezer, and just thaw it out when you're ready because the stock doesn't need to have, you know, unfrozen vegetables. It's perfectly fine if you freeze those scraps and things as well. So we're going to go ahead and get over to the stove now. Uh, let's see. Are all these going to be online? Uh, there will be some online uh, now, and then I believe in May is when we're going to continue with the online classes. Um, how long can we keep them for stock? Uh, typically, things are good in the freezer for about 90 days uh, on average. So 90 days is, is about when you have it. If you keep it in the fridge, I would say three to five days. So use it immediately if you're going to have it in the fridge. Okay. Uh, can it be saved long in the fridge? Yeah, three to five days. And what do the spores look like? Uh, the spores you actually can't see. They're kind of microscopic, but you feel them in your eyes. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and get started. Going to go ahead and use some olive oil. I have a paella pan here. If you have a rondeau or a wide skillet, feel free to use that as well. Okay, I'm going to put about a quarter cup of olive oil in here. Okay. And then we're gonna take these onions that we just cut up. Gonna add those in. Have a little bit of extra onion here. And your onions are just your aromatic, basically. Aromatic is a term that we use in industry for uh, three main uh, vegetables, especially. That's uh, ginger, that's garlic, that's onion, um, shallots are a good one as well. And these are just ingredients that let off a very good aroma, as well as they tend to add a base flavor that heightens everything else that's around it, okay? So you'll notice very fast when someone's cooking onions, garlic, or ginger, they're very potent. Um, but yeah, that's what we're gonna do with that, all right? And what we're doing here is we are sauteing the onions until they become translucent. All that means is that the juices that are in the onion that make it that nice white color are just starting to come out. So that's what it means sweat, or you might say uh, get them translucent. That's what those recipes mean, okay? Okay. And this normally takes about, mm, we'll say a minute or two. In order for that to happen, maybe three minutes, depending on the type of stove you have, especially if it's electric, it'll take a little longer because electric works on radiant heat. So it'll heat up and it'll cool down, heat up and cool down, and it'll be evidenced by the red color that's there, okay? So we're going to add our uh, garlic now. This is about eight cloves of garlic. Okay, we're also going to add our ginger now, about two tablespoons of ginger. All right, again, we're going to just do this until basically the ginger and the garlic start to uh, get a little toasty, just a little bit. You don't want it too toasted. We're not looking for scorched earth here. We're just looking for a little bit of color on them. Okay. And you guys feel free to ask questions along the way. 
Um, I can see all the questions that you guys have. So just feel free to do that. This is going to take about four or five minutes. If you have a higher stove like mine, which burns a little hotter, this will take maybe three minutes. Okay. And again, just looking for slice color. You're not looking for something that uh, is the color of coffee. All right. Okay. And just to give you an idea of what that looks like. All right. So you guys can see that we have some good color there and the onions are pretty translucent and it smells pretty good too. All right. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and add now our carrots. And I'm gonna turn the seat down a little bit. Don't turn yours down. I'm turning it down because I'm gonna demonstrate uh, uh, how to cut this potato real quick. It's not really a major thing. Everybody pretty much knows, but uh, my potatoes are whole. And the reason why they're whole is because I don't like my potatoes to turn brown, okay? And even if you add water to it, sometimes you might still get a little bit of that brown color. And so I just cut mine fresh, if at all possible, all right? And you can leave the skin on the potatoes as well. You do not have to cut the skin off of those. Um, one great question I get many times with this is, why am I cutting them all one inch? And the main reason why is you want everything to cook at the same time. So if you have five different sizes, that means that you're going to have five different cook times, okay? We don't want that. We want everything to cook at the same time. So that way, when this is done, you have a nice meal that you don't have to then overcook other things in order for the recipe to be completed, okay? So we'll add these potatoes in now. And you guys let me know if I'm going too fast, okay? Just a tad. <laughs> All right. And I just cut it into quarters basically, cut each half into quarters. And then remember the tip of your finger is about one inch. So that's a good ruler that you can use to measure that, all right? Okay. And if you're cutting like me, just make sure you're aware of the temperature and make sure that you give it a stir every now and then so nothing sticks. Right now, I'm using an anodized pan, so it's non-stick, but if you're using stainless steel, that could really be a nightmare later on, um, especially when it comes to your flavor. If you toast things too much, sometimes they get a bitter flavor, and that's not what we're looking for here, okay? Um, and just one point for you guys. Uh, traditionally, this is done with butter. Uh, it was a style called uh, Kidra, which was clarified butter that they used to use with this. Um, and then today, a lot of people use olive oil. That's the uh, Macquali style, I believe. And they use the olive oil to enrich the flavors. If you have vegetable oil, you can use that. If you have grapeseed oil, avocado oil, coconut oil, you can use that as well. There is no rule saying that you have to definitely use that. Okay, and that also goes for some of these ingredients. This is just the recipe that I'm providing you with, but the beautiful part of a tagine and many casserole type or stew or one pot dishes is you can substitute some other ingredients in that you may like even better. So if you have turnips, you can put turnips in. If you have eggplants, you can put eggplants in. Um, you know, it, it's really just a matter of what your preference is, all right? So we'll turn this back up. All right. And let's see. Um, okay. So this is something I definitely wanted to let everybody know about. Uh, most people have ground spices in their home. And there's nothing wrong with ground spices. However, what happens is, as spices are sitting, they tend to oxidize, just like anything else that's exposed to oxygen, which means that they lose flavor over time. We don't want that. We want the freshest ingredients possible. Now, if you do have ground ingredients already, it's not a problem. The best way to wake those ingredients up is what I'm about to do in a second. And what that is, is you take these spices and you add them into your pan early and you toast them slightly. And the toasting kind of wakes those flavors up. It wakes that, that um, ingredient up where it kind of feels a little fresher again. Okay. Now, the thing you have to be careful of as anything else, you don't want to burn it. Okay. 
So I'm gonna add this in in one second, but first I'm also gonna show you that I have the wrong one. Okay, so Stace, can you grab me the other um, spice grinder, please? I have some cinnamon and I have some, uh, uh, it should be over there. I have some cinnamon and I have some um, coriander inside, okay? So while I'm waiting on that, we'll just go ahead and if it's not there, then it is over in the baby's area, okay? So we're just gonna add those spices in for now. Grab my wife's spice grinder. I know, everybody has that problem. <laughs> She's camera shy, so she's not going to get on here, but just know she's beautiful to me and to everybody else that sees her. Okay. So in here is empty too, which means we have to grab some new stuff. Okay. So grab some cinnamon. Again, we'll turn down our heat slightly. You know, these things happen. And it is what it is. Hey, Stace. The ingredients are missing. Can you run to the um, apartment and grab some coriander out of the cabinet? Nope, I have the cinnamon right here. Okay, this will give you guys a chance to catch up as well. All right. So give me a thumbs up if you guys are okay right now. I can see everybody here. Uh, let me know if you guys are behind and I need to slow down a little more again. <laughs> yes, she is uh, one of my many sous chefs in this house. The boys are in training right now. Okay, so I'll slow down a little bit for you guys. Do not worry. Do not worry. I am with you. Uh, one of the ingredients that is... Um, Coming up, I want to give you an idea about it, and that is harissa paste. So uh, harissa paste, it comes in a box like this. Um, and can you grab this for me, too? It's in the fridge in the apartment, too. Thanks. Um, so this is harissa paste. This is basically ground uh, peppers with some spices. You can get it at a fine fair market, and it's about three forty nine dollars on average. Uh, at least out here in New York, it's about three forty nine dollars in your area. It may be slightly cheaper unless you live in San Diego because they're just like New York. Uh, however, you can, um, are we adding all the spices to the recipe now? Yes, we are adding the spices to the recipe now, and we are giving them a slight toast, okay? So, if you do not have harissa paste, it is quite all right. Take your favorite hot sauce, and you can substitute that in. About one tablespoon of this is about one to three teaspoons of hot sauce, okay? So, just to give you an idea about that. All right, got the coriander. And this is whole coriander. A lot of people don't buy this because they don't know what to do with it. Uh, we need about mm, one teaspoon of the coriander. And if you, this costs maybe $20, $30 max. And all you gotta do is just toss it in and grind it up. That's it, you just press the button until it's done. This is the cheaper version which is why it uh, only costs 20 to $30. They can range up to around $100. But they're all the same. It's just a matter of having more than one vessel um, to chop this stuff in, okay? So that's nice and chopped. Gonna go ahead and add it in there. Okay. Alrighty, so. We have that in now. Again, we're just going to go ahead and give it just a little bit of a toast. Still haven't put the potatoes in yet. Okay, I understand. Um, we'll make sure you get that. We, do, we add the harissa right now, so right after you toast the spices. And the reason why you want to add the harissa right after the spices is because you don't want it to become too potent, and then that capsaicin will make you hack and sneeze and cough. So the reason why we're adding it now is because it's right before we start adding our liquids in. Okay? All right, and actually, you know what? I'm not going to add the harissa right now in mine because it's okay. I'm not going to add the harissa right now in mine because this is also going to be the boys' dinner, and they can't handle that spice yet. They aren't full-blown Guyanese people like my wife is, so you know they can't really handle that yet. So I'm going to add mine separately, and feel free to omit the hot sauce if it's too hot for you. That is also something that you are 
perfectly fine in doing. It does change the flavor slightly, but what it mostly does is it takes away some of the spiciness away from it if you don't have it in there, okay? Um, so now we're gonna add the uh, tomatoes. All right, um, this is a Roman tomato. Uh, it is one of the sweeter tomatoes, okay? So uh, this is a 28 ounce can and I need about 15 ounces. So a little less, a little more than half the can, okay? These are whole tomatoes. I like the whole tomatoes because they break down as they cook, which is why I put them in the recipe, okay? And go ahead and add your stock now as well. And this is a homemade veggie stock. Again, something you could do with all those scraps. But you're going to add about a quart of the stock. Okay. And let's turn that heat back up to high until it starts to boil. Uh, now, the homemade veggie stock, again, something very easy, very simple, and you can use just scraps if that's all you have. You can use scraps for it as well, um, and that is very basic. It's a French one, and it is uh, celery, carrot, onion, thyme, uh, black peppercorn, garlic cloves, and some parsley stems. And that's all you're doing. You're sauteing that up, and then you add your water in. Typically, it's two to one, twice as much water three times maximum that you have of those ingredients. And bay leaf, forgot about that, sorry. And then you just let it go for about 30 minutes. Uh, once it reaches a boil, let it go for about 30 minutes on low heat, and that's it. Drain out all that stuff, and you have house-made veggie stock that you can freeze as well for 90 days. And you can use that in sauces, you can make risotto with that. Um, you can even use it to make soup if you want. So just did a little tip. Uh, in the store, you can also buy that, and it's about, 250 for that that amount you'll probably pay about four dollars for okay so uh one thing i forgot to add which i'm sure you may have noticed by now is the sweet potatoes we're adding the sweet potatoes in now because we really want those sweet potatoes to not have a lot of scorch on them okay the other thing we want to add right now is our dried fruit uh, tagines work on the principle of sweet and sour for the most part. And so how that works is you have sourness, which is the lemon that we're going to add in later. Uh, you also have the acid from the tomatoes, and then you have the sweetness from the dried fruit that also allows it to um, have uh, that balance that you get in the traditional tagine. So we're going to add that in now. I have... Um, been asked the question, do I have to use apricots? Do I have to use raisins? No, you don't, okay? Uh, you can use whatever dried fruit you have. Uh, raisins and apricots are traditional. In mine, I just put dates in because I already had them here. Again, our goal is to not have to leave the house if we already have the ingredients in-house, okay? Uh, let's see. Love prune. Yes, prunes are awesome. My boys are finding that out. Uh, can I get the ratio of tomato paste and cayenne instead of harissa? Um, the, I didn't give the ratio of tomato paste and cayenne. However, uh, if you want to do that, I would do two-thirds of it as um, eh, two-thirds tomato paste. And depending on the temperature of your cayenne, if it's a super hot cayenne versus if it is just a uh, low-grade cayenne, which is what you normally find on the supermarket shelf, I would do maybe... Uh, we'll say two tablespoons of the tomato paste um, and maybe uh, a tablespoon of the cayenne, okay? That should work pretty well. Um, you're using mulberries. That is awesome. Mulberries are perfectly acceptable as well. And, uh, you know, it adds a different flavor to it as well. The thing is, a tagine is one of those dishes that everybody's folks, everybody's house, everybody's restaurant has their own version, just like jambalaya. They put in their own little touches on it. And so this is perfectly fine. Make this recipe yours, use what you have in your house, and just elevate your food to a different experience than what you've experienced before. And it's not because you aren't capable, this is because you didn't know. So that's what we're here for. And for the most part right now, Okay, add your bay leaf right now as well, now that it's coming up to a boil. 
And the one thing I want to remind everybody of is the fact that this is being recorded. Um, so you will be able to get access to it at another time. And the recipe will be sent to you as well once this is over. Okay, so don't fear if you feel like you're missing something. It will be sent to you and you will be okay. All right. Um, so let's see. Okay, so you just want to give this a stir. And if you are on an electric stove, I suggest that you keep it on high once the liquid is in. Again, you have that radiant heat and the thing you don't want to do is only have it on medium or simmer half of the time. So if you have it on high, then it will fluctuate between what the gas stoves are fluctuating, our gas stoves are consistently at with the hot and the uh, medium, okay? So I would definitely keep that up. All right, um, so something that a lot of people ask me, and I'm just taking a step back right now only because this is going right now and um, there's not much we can do until the potatoes get soft. We're cooking this until the potatoes, the sweet potatoes, and the um, Idaho potatoes get soft. Uh, again, if you don't have sweet potatoes, that's fine. Use more of the red potato or Idaho potato. You can use russet potato. Uh, the beauty of this is you can substitute almost anything in here just have to have an idea of how fast it cooks, okay? Um, but to get back to what I was saying, a lot of people ask, where am I getting my sources from right now as far as my food is concerned? And uh, something I want to point out to you is that there's a lot of home delivery that happens now, uh, and people do a lot of contactless delivery too. So what my wife and I use is a service called um, Misfits Market. Okay, and they have uh, 10 to 13 pound boxes for like $22 and 18 to 22 pound boxes for $35. Everything is organic from local farms and it's uh, fruits and vegetables. So you just get a, a box full of packed fruits and vegetables. Do you have a preferred gluten-free grain? Um, quinoa. Quinoa is a preferred gluten-free grain of mine. Uh, it's very simple, very quick to make, and it has a very delicious flavor. And uh, it doesn't take a lot of guesswork to know when it's done. Okay. Um, so in the this is the I know I have props. Yay me. Uh, so this is the 22 pound box that we just got. And again, it's 35 dollars. The box is almost half my size, and it's not a bad not a bad um thing for you to invest in if you are trying to avoid some of those trips to the store. However, Misfits currently has paused their subscriptions for new customers because of all the demand from the customers that are already there being home so frequently and using those vegetables more. Uh, so there are some other ones out there. Uh, Imperfect Produce is one. Uh, Plate Joy, uh, Farm Drop, Next Door Organics, uh, Wonky Vegetables, as well as Farm Box Direct. Farm Box Direct is the closest to uh, uh, Misfits Market. Okay, and again, these aren't bad fruits and vegetables, they're just vegetables that they didn't think people would buy in the store because they aren't the same size or the color is slightly off or uh, one carrot might have a, a head that's like this instead of it just being, you know, one head. So that's something to keep in mind is um, there are other ways to eat healthy without breaking the bank. And this is a beautiful uh, way to do that. Uh, we basically only go out every two weeks now to the grocery store to get meat and to get starches if we want another starch like a rice or a pasta or something like that. So um, the bay leaf is in. We added the bay leaf uh, right after it came to a boil. Okay, so it's actually right here on the top. And don't worry about the amount of liquid in here. As the food cooks, this will cook down. Okay. And also your dried fruits will hydrate and it will release those sugars into the stock as well. Okay. Uh, does anybody else have any questions right now? Uh, shouldn't the bay leaf be in? Lemon juice, lemon juice we are adding towards the end. The reason why you wanna add the lemon juice towards the end is if lemon juice gets cooked for too long, it gets a very strong bitter flavor and that's not what we want. We want it a little more tame, a little more under control. So we add it towards the end to kind of finish it off and just mix it in, okay? So um, the other thing I need to add is I need to add the chickpeas at the end. I need to add the cilantro and uh, parsley is basically just your garnish. 
So that's something we could do right now while we're waiting. If you guys have not done that yet, is we can chop up our garnish greens. I prefer curly parsley. You don't have to do as much to it in order to still have a nice looking garnish out of that, okay? So this is our cilantro. And you can feel free to keep the stems in as well. It's gonna cook in. Uh, and the easiest way to do it, if you have a large bunch, is to fold it in half. And then you're just gonna run your knife through it, roughly. And the reason why I say roughly instead of mincing it is because you don't want the leaves to cook so fast that by the time your dish is done, they start turning brown, okay? And again, we want to avoid bitterness. Once they turn brown and get soggy, it kind of takes away from it. So uh, fresh herbs, you always want to add towards the end of the cooking, whereas dry herbs, you want to add towards the beginning, again, to kind of wake them up, to soften them up so they can cook a little longer and not have a woody texture, okay? And these stems, again, safe for stock. All right. So we're going to go ahead and set this aside. Uh, no, you don't need to cover the pot. You can if you want to, but you don't have to cover the pot. Uh, because you're cooking it on a lower setting, it's actually uh, not going to evaporate as much as it normally would. Okay. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. Okay, so that's set aside. <laughs> Okay, so right now is the time that we need to taste it and we need to see where our flavor is. And this is the first time that we're going to add a little bit of salt in order to see where the flavor is. Now your harissa, your hot sauce, uh, many of those fermented ingredients that are hot are normally fermented with vinegar or with salt. So you have to be careful of how much salt you're adding, which is why we're tasting it to see where we are. So we know how much salt we already added through other ingredients. All right. Okay, so this one needs some help. So we're gonna add some salt to it, all right? And again, this is mainly because I didn't add the harissa to it. Um, I am using Himalayan pink sea salt. Um, you can use kosher salt. Uh, keep, if you use table salt, you have to keep in mind that it's very weak in flavor, so you'll add a ton and you'll get very bad heart condition if you're using table salt for this. So um, the pink salts, the um, um, black salt, you can add black salt to it as well, and kosher salt, um, I would recommend those more than table salt, okay? This just happens to be something that my wife got because that's all that they had at the time when she went to the store. Okay, and we'll give it a stir and taste it one more time. All right, and again, feel free to ask questions if you have any questions. We still have a little bit of time before we're ready to finish this off, okay? All right, and let's see. All right, we got that, we got that, we got that. Um, Let's chop up this parsley for garnish. Okay, and the same thing. Um, you can either take the leaves and just pick the leaves off and use that for garnish. That's one way of garnishing. You can give it a rough chop, which sometimes is referred to as a country chop. That's basically what I did with the uh, cilantro. And the other thing that you can do is um, you can give it more of a minced chop, okay? Uh, because this already has a lot of curls to it, I'm not going to give it a minced chop. I'm just going to give it a rough chop as well. And parsley is more of a neutral herb. Save it for your stock. Just another reminder, you're going to be saying that in your sleep. Uh, the parsley is just an, uh, about a, a neutral garnish. It doesn't add a ton of flavor. Uh, however, it does add a little bit of earthiness to it, and it tends to be a very bright, vibrant green. Okay? So we're almost there. 
you'll know if you can pierce your vegetables. So you take your tomato, your potato, you notice that I was able to just stab that very easily. The knife slid right in and it comes right out. And the same thing with the sweet potato. The knife goes in very easily, very clean, comes right back out. So that's how you're going to know if this is ready for you to continue to the next step. All right. So the next step is I have to get uh, the bay leaf, I have to get the chickpeas and the cilantro. So we're going to turn this down just slightly because now we don't want to overcook our potatoes. Okay. So in one second to grab these chickpeas. All right. So I soak my chickpeas overnight. If you uh, get them fresh, easiest way to do it, if you get them canned, then you just have to drain them. But um, I like them fresh, so that's why I got them fresh. So we're just going to drain these. The reason why we're adding the chickpeas now is we don't want the chickpeas to become mush. Okay. So that's why we're just adding these now. And we don't even need the whole thing. This is a one pound bag. Uh, the chickpeas double in size. And so uh, for the 15 ounces, I can use half of this and that will get me everything that I need. All right. The chickpeas cook very quickly. All right. And if you notice, I'm not pouring. And the reason why I'm not pouring is a uh, common problem that happens, you pour, you don't realize how hard or how fast or the angle that you're pouring, next thing you know, the whole thing is in there. I don't want all of this. So I'm going to save this for some falafel or, you know, I can make some, um, um, a lot of things you can make with chickpeas. But either way it goes, um, you know, you want to set this aside so you can use it for that as well. You know, we can make some hummus out of it too. So uh, we'll set that aside. All righty. So let's stir these chickpeas in. Okay. And by the way, uh, if you had butternut squash or you had some, some leftover uh, uh, zucchini or something like that, you would add that in around the same time as you would add in the sweet potatoes. Okay. So just wanted to give you a heads up on that. Ready? And we're going to give this one more taste. You always want to stir it before you taste it so you aren't tasting a dead spot and not getting the full flavor of the dish. Tastes pretty good to me. All right, so let's add our cilantro. And we're also going to add our lemon juice right now as well. So I know that uh, Taylor was asking about the lemon juice. Now is when we add our lemon juice. Okay. It may seem like a lot, but remember that um, dry fruit is pretty intense. So it releases a lot of sugar, and all we're doing is balancing it out. Okay. And you guys will notice that you have a lot less liquid than what you had before. And that's perfectly fine. We're not making soup, we're making stew. All right. And if your potatoes aren't done yet, it's okay. Just keep going until your potatoes are done. All right. And let's see, let's taste it one more time. Now that we've added that lemon juice in, so we can again balance it. Perfect. All right. So I'm just going to show this to you real quick so you guys can get a close up of what this looks like. And you can see the potatoes are nice and finished. Uh, the sweet potatoes are soft, but they're not mushy. And the potatoes have broken themselves down. So this is your tagine right here. Let's go ahead and garnish it to finish it. And that's where the parsley comes in. Now, now you can use um, toasted almonds, our traditional ingredient. Green um, onions are another traditional ingredient. 
and as well as um, sometimes you might see some chives or some scallions. So, you know, just know that those are all definitely acceptable ingredients you can use on there uh, as garnish. Seems to have a lot of liquid. Is that normal? Um, no, just keep the, the pan open, um, Jelena. Keep the pot, keep the, the top open and go ahead and just turn it on a simmer and let it come out a little slower. Uh, the reason why you want it on a simmer is because you'll be getting rid of that liquid without overcooking your other ingredients that are in there. And as soon as your potatoes are soft enough, you are done with the dish, okay? So this is a Moroccan veggie tagine, okay? I know there's probably some questions, so I will give you the opportunity to ask those questions right now. I wanted to make sure there was a little bit of time at the end in case you guys had some extra questions, okay? So uh, something that I want to uh, tell you, number one, is thank you for joining us. Thank you for being a part of this experience. We understand that everybody's going through this right now. And, you know, we want to let you know we're in this together. Uh, with that in mind, I want to remind you that there are a lot of local restaurants that have contactless delivery, contactless pickups, and I want to encourage you and to take advantage of that. Help them out if you have the money. I know everybody doesn't have that right now, which is perfectly fine. It happens to everybody. You know, I, I'm blessed with an opportunity to work from home right now and help you with that. Uh, however, uh, if you guys are in Long Island, Mims and Roslyn is a great restaurant, and they are doing uh, home cook, home uh, American cooking right now, and they are delivering and they are still open and it's only through your support that they're able to stay open right now. Uh, Field Trip in Harlem is doing some beautiful work out there. They're actually taking and making bowls that people are donating money to the restaurant so they can make bowls and then take those out to the frontline people. So they're taking them to the hospitals, they're taking them to the EMTs, they're taking them to all the people that are supporting us throughout our cities. So Field Trip in Harlem is a great place to support as well, okay? Um, so I want to wrap this up by saying, uh, if you guys have any pictures, feel free to tag Koki Social. Uh, if you're interested in finding out my other classes, look on the website, or you can also, uh, contact hello at kokisocial.com. Uh, um, we will be offering private cooking classes online as well as virtual corporate events too. Uh, again, hello at kokisocial.com. And you will also see in-person events as well that are happening there. So you can sign up for those. We don't know when everything is going to happen. If you don't want to sign up now, that's fine too. Uh, we also have gift cards available. So in the top right corner of kokisocial.com, you can click on gift card and you can order some for yourself, order some for a friend, okay? Uh, and if you do book a class, we will not leave you hanging if the class gets canceled because of what's going on right now. We will never cancel on you. We'll just postpone until another date where it's more appropriate. So you will be taken care of, okay? Um, look forward to the chicken soup class. Oh, that's awesome. So go ahead and sign up for the chicken soup class. That's the next class. Um, that's the next class is the chicken soup class. So go ahead and uh, do that. And uh, I will see you on Saturday. Uh, looks like my little co-hosts want to say goodbye. So let me see. So. From my kitchen to yours, we just want to say goodbye. Say bye. You want to wave? Want to wave at everybody? Say bye, everybody. <laughs> all right? And we will see you guys on Saturday, all right? Um, <laughs> yeah, say bye, bye. Bye, bye. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Um, Go to mommy. <laughs> all right. So um, again, any more questions, contact Kofi Social as well as you will receive the recipe shortly. All right. Take care, guys. Bye. Bye. -bye. <laughs> Thank you. Mm -hmm. Danielle, is your, is your meal finished? No. <laughs> <laughs>